good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, delighted to be here. Um, as Michael said, um, up until uh, last March, I was the, the CEO and the founder of uh, Relax Payments. And then as part of the deal that we did when Relax Payments was sold, I acquired 100% of um, Fire Financial Services. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what Fire Financial Services is up to um, towards the end of, of, of the presentation. What I was going to do was just share with you some thoughts that we have um, within FIRE about some of the changes which are happening within the financial services sector and some of the changes, if you like, that are now resulting in great opportunity for, for many, many people to be able to perhaps take part in an, in an industry that up until this point in time was quite difficult to get into where there were a lot of barriers to entry. Um, the, 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 the big changes in, in the marketplace right now which have been driven by in terms of financial technology and financial services, the changes are being driven by many different factors which are really coming together at the same time and having this impact. You hear people talking about fintech and the great opportunity in fintech and some of the valuations that people are putting on some of those businesses that are involved in fintech are incredibly high as well. And it's interesting to try and understand why is it that people are so keen to get into financial services right now? Why, what is it that's motivating, and particularly from an investment point of view as well, why are the investors as well so keen on getting involved in financial services? And, you know, why didn't I just go to the beach and, and not get involved in, in another company? What, what was, what's the, the motivation behind the intrigue, if you like, that's there today? And I think there's a number of things which are changing. And they're, they're all coming together at the one time, which is creating this environment where there's a huge expectation now that something big is going to happen in fintech. And it's, people talk about the dismantling of the environment, they talk about the you know, disruption and innovation, but I kind of prefer to kind of have words which are a little bit more precise, perhaps, and to try and describe it in a little bit more detail rather than just with, with those adjectives and say, well, what is it that's changing? And it's very hard to predict, well, what shape will the financial service of the future take? If you're asking me, like, what product will you be using in five years' time to do your online banking? I'm not too sure exactly what that might look like, but I can describe maybe some of the attributes of that product to you. And it'll obviously be very mobile-centric, and it'll be totally to do with your mobile phone. It'll be totally to do with the device, and it'll be totally to do with you. It'll be about making sure that your experience that you have with that interaction is really, really different. One of the things that we often think about is within our business at the moment is this customer experience. And people, when they look at customer experience, they often look at their banking experience, you know, with not the same love as was and affection that they look at maybe the experience they have with other industries and other sub products and services that they consume. Banking is one of those things, it's a bit of a chore, it's a bit of a difficulty, it's, it's never meant to be fun really, it's never meant to be a pleasure. So what is it? And what is it that we can do to really make that banking interaction a pleasure? And the challenge is coming down to, like, well, the experience that I have when I engage with my service provider is not what I expect it to be. And all of this is leading to, to people to becoming frustrated. The systems are not maybe providing me with the solution that I want at this point in time. Access to the data that I have within the account is difficult to get. The process by which I open the account is cumbersome and slow. My requirement to open subsequent accounts in different jurisdictions is very difficult. And therefore, the, the journey becomes one of, you know, that's often labeled with frustration. And how do you take that frustration out of the banking experience and what is it that you can try to do to it? On top of that, and if all that's kind of just a big problem, the problem is then how do you get into that sector? How do you enter into that sector if you're not a bank? And there's this regulation change which is happening all of the time. So all of the time we think of regulation sometimes as the thing that actually is there to protect the consumers and to make sure that things are kept safe and to make sure that banks do what they're expected to do. So this competent authorities, the central banks of different European countries will say, right, we are the authority, we will supervise and we will regulate the sector, we will make sure that you're doing the job that you're meant to be doing. That's true of regulation, but regulation also particularly the European legislation, has really changed the landscape quite a lot over the last number of years. And what it's effectively doing is it's opening up opportunity for non-bank companies to now enter into the financial services market. So the regulation is specifically designed to encourage competition and to encourage innovation in the market. In the UK in the last couple of years, we've seen a payment systems regulator 
emerge, which is on top of the conduct regulator, which is the FCA, you now have a regulator that is specifically designed to bring competition, innovation, and the, the end user services to the front of the market. So they're an economic regulator, if you like, and they're there simply to encourage competition in the market. And these are great things. So you see a political drive towards bringing competition into the market, and you also see a drive from a, from a regulatory perspective. And we call this the great fintech scramble. And what I just wanted to try and describe was that up until this point in time, many of us are used to the idea of consuming our services directly from the banks for, which give us the service. But if you book a, a flight or if you book a taxi today, you often don't go to the airline anymore. You mightn't even go to the taxi firm anymore. You'll go to Halo or Uber or something like that. There'll be a service provider between you and the service that you get. And so we believe that the way that financial services will change and the way that your interaction with banks will change will be that there'll be third-party companies between you and the service that you provide, providing you with access to the financial services products that you're consuming from the bank. And what's happened is, that the regulation that's now in place and the regulation that's being developed over the last couple of years and there's a new version of that regulation coming out in two years' time, that that is now all supporting the structure of a, an environment and a business like this. So obviously when that's happening, you can imagine the glorious opportunities that exist across multiple different levels then within this industry right now. So right now, you will leg legitimately, one can and one will be able to make an app that will, I can make you an app that would allow you to access your account with Bank of Ireland or AIB. Okay, that was what is now defined in the legislation and that's what's going to be in the marketplace and in, in 18 months time or two years time, you're going to see a lot of companies providing applications that allows you to access the account or the service that you have with another, with another financial institution. There are numerous what we call aggregation gateways in place. There are numerous providers that will emerge onto the scene who are looking for the opportunity to be able to aggregate. So in other words, if I am Amazon, if I'm Ryanair, I want to be able to let you pay directly from your bank account without using a card, because that is the essence of what's coming in this new regulation. That allows me to be able to initiate payments directly from a bank account. So in order for me as a retailer to be able to accept that service, I need access to an aggregation gateway. So there's plenty of companies that are moving into this space now as well and opening up opportunities for themselves. The networks and the platforms and the accounts, it just means that into the future, there will be companies that will be providing accounts as a platform, the account in the cloud, so the ability for third-party companies to be able to launch financial services products. You see today, many companies will, third-party companies will issue a credit card, for example. Into the future, Tesco in the UK have a bank account. Into the future, more and more and more non-financial services companies will be opening up financial services products and selling bank accounts to people. And we believe that through the platform providers, uh, will be then giving and enabling those companies, if you like, to be able to go to market as well. And then at the top or bottom of the chain, depending on which way you look at them, you have what are basically deposit institutions. So where the money, or as Father Ted would say, if it's resting in the account, that's maybe where the, the ultimate deposit would ultimately reside. And all of these things create a great opportunity for many, many businesses to be able to enter into the financial services sector. And because the system, if you like, is being separated out in a vertical way like that, it means that there's opportunity at many, many different levels. And so we're seeing lots of different companies come in and wanting to play, if you like, some people who want to be the app developers and want to provide that end user experience, others who want to be the account in, 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 in the cloud. And so what we're up to with FIRE is we, we are looking at this and we're trying to say to ourselves, well, where will we be and what will we be when we grow up? And so what we've done with FIRE is we've got three basic kind of... Um, I suppose marketplaces, if you like, that we've looked at and we've kind of said, this is where we'd like to compete. And from a business perspective, businesses, business, particularly SMEs, they really crave to have an account that's you know, more like their personal account than the corporate account that they get from the bank. They want to be able to open an account quickly and easily, and they want to be able to open up accounts with multiple different currencies. They want to move money in real time, and they want access to the data, and they want access through an API, and perhaps access from a webhook as well, so that when money comes into their account, they can be pinged in real time and told that they've been paid, and who it is that's paid them, to making the whole reconciliation process easier. So an integrated account, an integrated experience, and that's what we're now offering, and we've got about 350 businesses now live on fire, and we provide them with a basic account. We provide them with big IBAN sort code account number for the UK, so it operates in sterling and euro, and it gives those businesses, we can open up the accounts within 24 hours when a business comes to us and allows them to get up and running. And that's a really nice kind of feature, get up and running quickly, have multiple accounts in euro and sterling, be able to get credit transfers in and out, 
and then to be able to get access to the information that you have in the account through an API. And we're finding a really good positive reaction from people to that. Over the coming months, we'll be adding more and more features to that as well. We've got a, a, a personal app, which we call Pay With Fire, which is up in the App Store. And Pay With Fire is a, a kind of an example, if you like, of an app that can be used in this environment. It does provide people with sterling and euro accounts as well, with the real-time transfers between them. And again, over the coming months, we'll be launching the Fire Card, which will be a debit card of those accounts, which can operate in multiple different currencies, which will combine with the app. And then we'll put in more of the traditional kind of current account features, such as direct debits and standing orders and so on. So that hopefully by the end of the year, early next year, we'll have most of the features that you would need to be able to bank less and do more with us, is the hope. And then next year, what we hope when we have that up and running is that we hope then to be able to go to third parties who want to go to market, if you like, with um, their own version of these type of accounts who maybe got distribution that we don't have. So maybe, you know, big internet businesses or whatever that want to get out there or who've got consumer brand or business brand and they want to be able to bring, a, you know, a financial services product to market, but they've always been inhibited by the build and by the complications and by the issues with licenses and so on. So we have a license from the central bank to be a payment institution and we've passported that license to uh, 13 different countries in Europe now at this stage. And so that allows us, you know, and we're legitimately allowed to provide the service to our customers. But the platform, so when we have our business account, we've got our personal account, and then hopefully next year, as I say, we'll start entering into the platform space where we will then enable third parties to be able to launch their own version of firing effect um, out onto the marketplace as well. Um, so I'd like to just to say thanks again to Dublin... Uh, Deepik as well, because the guys have worked very hard over the years to really create a, you know, a, a really good ecosystem in Dublin. I can remember very well the, the 15 years ago when I was starting out in, in business in Dublin, and there was very, very little available in terms of an ecosystem or in terms of support or in terms of networks that you could go to where you could, you know, even meet people and talk to people. And it's been amazing over the last 15 years to see the city change and the landscape change and the whole environment change. And it's brilliant to see events like this and so many other events that are happening as well, which brings people together and it creates a, a super atmosphere within, within, the, um, with, within the whole city and the country as well. Um, we've been very fortunate and very lucky in business. You know, we've had a great journey over the last 15 years. And as well as FIRE, we now also have a, an investment fund we've completed. And it's a really pleasure for us to be able to go back in and be able to support new businesses as well outside of FIRE. And we've co closed two of those deals already, one with the Pundit Arena and um, the Sports Media website, and the other with VT Networks, which is an Internet of Things network to support the, um, the transportation of data. Um, and so we're really pleased and really delighted to be involved in those businesses and to be you know, meeting people who are really as enthusiastic as we are about doing business in Ireland and being able to build businesses in Ireland. And one of the best things, and the big lessons, I suppose, of the past for us was you know, not getting stuck, not thinking as an Irish business, even though you're here, you're, 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 your marketplace is not Ireland, obviously. And like for fire, like already, that with the 350 businesses that we have, uh, well over more than half of those are UK-based companies because we've been selling into there first rather than selling, and we've nobody there. But, like, but that's what you can do, obviously, online if you can focus on that. And so I always tell people nowadays to think about their business because with Relax we kind of started off here and it took us then a while to get exporting, but eventually then we did, and eventually 80% of our sales were, were all overseas. But certainly for Fire, I noticed that I'm changing a bit and I'm now focused very much on the, on the external market first as well. But again, so just thanks to the guys from, from DBIC for asking me along today and, and um, just congrats to the guys for, for, for organizing this event as well. So thank you very much, guys.